working on the collet closer on the Little Atlas production lathe and I'm going to at some point in time want a rack to hold those collets, all my spare collets and if that uh, closer should ever not be used and I were using a regular chuck, why I want a place to store the spindle nose protector and the uh, adapter that accepts those 3C collets or 3AT, whichever the case may be. Um, so I'm just going to build a little pattern to cast up an aluminum rack for that. And this is my initial little sketch. Let's see if it's going to show up very well or not. Um, I've modified this a little bit. We're doing it 8 inches by 8 inches. It'll be half inch thick for the rack itself. And then there'll be a boss on the bottom with a um, adapter basically or a board shaft so that it will accept a shaft to, to use as a standoff off of the lathe bed. Um, a couple of different ways I could have done it. I thought about doing a clamp mechanism and clamping it to the bed. Not a whole lot of real estate on the, on the bed on this production lathe. I think I'll be better served by just putting basically a flange on the, on the pan itself and installing it there and having the rod that supports this collar rack come off of that. So that's what I'm going to do, but today I'm going to concentrate on the layout of the, of the rack itself. And what I've done is just taken a little 8 by 8 inch piece, two pieces of tempered hardboard. They're a, they've got a white coating on one side of them. And I've um, carpet taped them together. I've got double sided tape in between. They're there. And what I've done is laid out the outer edges of that. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and do my basic layout of where the holes are going to go. I'll go ahead and radius the outer edges where I've already got marked out so we've got a nice rounded corner on them and then we'll add about a three degree taper and I'll do that on the on the oscillating belt sander. That'll give us our draft for that for this pattern and I want to do that top and bottom because the the bottom section will be the where the holes are bored through to hold the collet. This upper section is going to be a raised boss around the outer edge and then there's going to be a boss basically in the center. It's offset a little bit that will hold the spindle nose protector. Then below that we're going to have a, I think it's a one inch hole to accept that, that spindle adapter or whatever the size. Any of these holes, the rest of the holes I believe three quarter inch will uh, accommodate a, both a 3AC or a 3AT collet. So we're going to do the, that layout. Um, I've modified this design just a little bit. I've moved this boss up just a small amount, about a half an inch. Done away with two of these holes. That also allows me to move uh, the adapter holder up a little bit, plus we'll get more clearance on these two holes. So we end up with a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 17 holes for collets. Um, maybe we'll need more, maybe we won't need that many, but it'll take me a while to fill that up anyway. So I think this is a fairly good compact design. We're going to go ahead and start forming that up. This will be initially cast as a loose pattern. I'm just going to run it as a loose pattern. If it's a design I decide I like, I will adapt it to a match plate. And uh, for those of you who aren't aware of what a match plate is, this will be a match plate. And this blank is set up for a uh, snap flask, which the flask opens, you pull it off from your sand, uh, reassemble it, and you can ram up another one. So you can do multiple. Um, patterns or multiple molds with uh, with one flask without having to have an array of flasks. Um, I'm going to adapt my system a little bit more. I'm going to make some changes to it. But anyway, this is the system I've got now. Now this particular flask is the one that I use the most of. And I've got it set up for several of my patterns that I do a lot. This particular pattern is uh, flask hardware. These are two to build the hardware that goes on the end of my snap flasks. Uh, this one's getting in a little bit of disrepair, but the way it works is you put it on your snap flask and these uh, are basically adjustable. They're set up to give you the amount of tension and index it properly on the flask itself. You put that in place, ram up the bottom side, roll it all over as an assembly. You go ahead and ram up the upper section and then when you disassemble them, why we've got a air vibrator on here and these are cast vibrators. I've got a match plate set up for these two. So when you add air to them, why it spins a ball bearing in them, um, causes vibration and you can lift first the top half of the mold off and then the bottom half off and they index up fairly nicely. So if this uh, if this pattern is one that I like, I will adapt it to a to a match plate so that I can cast more of them. The downside to this particular match plate 
is this is the size that I most commonly use with the flask that this is set up for it's really close I think we've only got nine and a half inches wide where we've got an eight inch pattern going through and nine and a quarter nine and three eighths um, that's getting very close to the capacity for this flask now if I do cast them in this flask with this size there's not enough um, material around it there's not enough sand that will support a support a casting like that so if I cast them like that I'll have to use it as a solid flask and just leave that snap flask around the edge of it I'm gonna go ahead and form the outside edges we'll do the layout I will lightly drill where the holes are gonna go in this flat or in this pattern and then I'm gonna separate the two and we'll cut out the boss for the top and go ahead and drill the bottom section for the for the way we want it. So anyway, I'll get started on that. And all right, this is the rough layout of it. And what we've done is we put about a three degree bevel going this way all the way around on the outside. So that's the way it'll set. We'll line it up and then we'll then we'll final sand it after it's all glued back together. On here, we've taken and laid out where our collet holes are all going to go. I'm going to go in and just run a pilot drill through each one of these just to mark the location all the way through. Then I'm going to separate the two pieces and the bottom will get drilled the rest of the way through. The top piece will get cut out around here and then I'll cut out the, those uh, two sections and they'll get glued back in place once we get all that done. Here's our index holes. We drilled in all of these points around here. We'll get drilled three quarter inch on the bottom section. This one will be drilled one inch on the bottom section and that will hold the adapter. This will be an index hole for the boss that comes out on the back so we won't drill that any bigger at this time. And both of these are the same way. They'll index this ring on here so we won't drill them out any bigger. And I marked them on the back, no drill. As soon as I separate these, why then I'll go ahead and mark them, no drill, so that we don't have any mistakes and, and do it by accident. So then what we'll do is we'll separate the two halves. I'll go ahead and drill my holes in the bottom section as appropriate to hold the collets and the uh, collet adapter. And then we'll take this top section and we'll just split it someplace, get in there with the bandsaw, and we'll cut the inside radius of that. Then we'll go back and sand a bevel on it. There's our basic bottom piece. There's the bottom piece that goes with it. We've got a, what we've done is I ended up with a unibit to drill my holes, which gave us a draft. And the collets will sit in there just like that. Lots of room for them. I could probably squeeze in at least two more holes at this point in time, I'm not going to. We've got our outer frame that will be glued in place here. our inner frame that will hold our um, nose protector will sit right there like that and the adapter will fit in that hole there and what we'll do is I'm just going to go ahead glue those in place right there that's what I'm going to do next and get that aligned um, I sanded draft on the outside I haven't done a whole lot of draft on the insides or this or the outside here I don't really think it's necessary yet anyway there'll be a fillet added all the way around and we've got to fill our hole there too and we'll put a, a, a fillet around inside and outside here to fill that space the next part of this will be to build an adapter that sits on the back and um, has our boss to support the upright post on it a couple of options with this hopefully I've got that to a standard size where it'll fit in a drawer if I've got an offset or a stand offset in the bottom of the drawer I want that to fit right in a, a drawer flat so we can store the collets that way or I want to have the option of being able to put them on a stand which will uh, sit on the on the lathe bed so anyway I'm going to glue those up that's going to be the end of this portion of it the back part for now since this is going to be a loose pattern is when I do the boss uh, it'll be a bigger round boss here and then the upright off of that those will be the parting line for this um, for this pattern and that will be the same way it works if I turn this into a match plate design. Is this will fit on one side and the uh, bosses will sit on the back side of it. And uh, then we can lay it out and gate them up. So anyway, there's where we're at. Time to glue them up. Well, there's a rough pattern for the collar rack. We'll uh, let that sit and dry. I won't do any more with it today. But we'll let that sit and dry. Then we'll sand the edges. We'll rebevel the outer edge to get rid of our glue line. and and straighten up any inconsistencies and we'll 
bevel the inside and outside on that a little bit just to give it a little more draft and we'll add some fillets in there let those dry sand them down and then the front part of this will be pretty well done and we'll just turn a little boss for the back side in the next section and uh, I think that's going to work real well. Just a little dust coat on there just to show where we've when we reach the edge of where we're sanding. pretty good on the outside. We'll break those edges a little bit on the inside and around there then we'll go ahead and fill some of these places and get a little fillet in there and this half of the pattern will be pretty close to being done. Looks good. We'll clean up our mess here, let it dry, and sand her out and get some paint on it. Okay, we're about ready for some primer here. We've got it pretty well sanded down. It'll take a couple three coats of primer. 
and uh, we'll see how the first one lays on and I use whatever primer and paint I've got usually it's a Rust-Oleum or an Ace Hardware Rust paint um, both are pretty good paints this is my rear boss this will set right like that and when we mount it while it'll sit like this angled back will be set up so that we can have our rod come out here and angle down probably oh I'm guessing about a 45 degree angle so we've got just a little bit you know whatever we decide is appropriate angle and that's where we can set it for our upright but we'll use that as a bottom um, in reality I will probably use this half as a pattern by itself and we can use this as a base to mount it down in the in the oil pan if that's the way we end up mounting so we'll probably just use that I've got a index pin on there but that's alright we can set it in a flask and, and um, just have a little hole for that to set in and we may very well use that for the for the uh, bottom pattern too that'll save me building another specialized pattern for it I will probably modify a uh, one of the uprights like I've got the the lamp and the um, and the power switch are mounted on right now they're mounted on that on that bracket for the uh, for the light I'll probably build a pattern for those and um, that could very well be modified and used as a mounting surface to mount these two off of the back of the lathe bed so anyway, I'm gonna get some primer on these and um, let them dry and we'll s see how close we can get to getting this done Here are the two pieces to this mold. Now they've just got a couple of coats of paint on them now. They'll uh, get sanded out at least one more time and get one more coat of paint on them. I've left the other side uncoated, uncoated for right now because we'll cast one or two out of it and then we'll, if we decide we're going to turn it into a match plate with them uncoated, it's, it's a little bit nicer to glue them down on, uh, on the uncoated surfaces. So anyway, we're just going to let this dry overnight probably and then we'll come back and sand them out and see what they look like. Hopefully this has been a little bit helpful for you. If it has, why well, go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And any comments or suggestions you've got for me, leave them in the comment section below. Thanks for taking the time to watch.